This is the town of New Ross in County Wexford. Still gracious, still showing the elegance of its great years of prosperity in the 18th century. The town was founded by Isabella, daughter of Strongbow, in the year 1200. Cromwell was here, and a century and a half later, the old streets were awash with the blood of men who shook sides at cannon in 1798. Just inside the Three Bullet Gate, named after a salvo fired by Cromwell, is the Castle Foundry, run by John Power for many years. This district once had home industries galore, sail making, nail making, coach building, weaving, harness making, tanning and rope making. Of all the crafts, only the foundry remains. May Power, John's uh, wife, and one of the many grandchildren. John and May have three girls and four boys. This is Seamus Power. John has handed over the running of the place to him, more or less. Don't be jumping, May. This is a family-run business in the truest sense. They're a very close-knit family, lovely to see in this day and age. Grandchildren and sons-in-law come and go and help as they can. But let Seamus introduce us to the rest of the family. That's me, Seamus Power. I'm the one who has to do all the, the donkey work and all the, the, the heavy going. And that's my other brother, David. He's responsible for all the, the good and bad castings that you'll see. Uh, Kevin is my younger brother. And Tommy, who lives up the street, uh, he drops in every now and again for a, a fag and to give us a bit of a hand. We can make anything in cast iron that we're asked to make. Tables and chairs, and manhole covers and fire grates. And, uh, we even got an order for a man who found uh, a garden chair in the river when they were dredging the river. Uh, it dates back to Victorian times. So he wants an opposite lake for to make up a, a garden bench. And the pattern of the garden bench will be the first thing to be put down in a mould this morning. The pattern will be encased in sand, which is enclosed in an aluminium box and is in two halves. David and Tommy Wall fill one half of the box with moulding sand and ram it home. Diesel oil is brushed onto the pattern to prevent condensation from forming and to make it more easily removed from the mould. The box in which the pattern is placed only supplies a temporary bed, as we'll see. Parting sand sprinkled on enable the two halves of the box to be separated at a later stage, without the sand from either side sticking together and ruining the impression. A substance called bentacol is mixed with the casting sand. This is used as a facing for the mould to prevent the sand from burning and sticking to the casting when the metal is poured into the mould. This half of the box, which has been placed over the pattern, will become the bottom of the mould. But first, it must be filled with casting sand. Two types of rammer are used to consolidate the sand. A peg rammer, which fits between the narrow bars of the box, and a flat rammer to finish it off. Piercing the sand with wire is called venting and will allow the expanding gases of the hot metal and steam from the sand to escape. The mould is now rolled over, and this is how the top box becomes the bottom of the mould. The sand from the other half, which has served its purpose, is discarded.
Copper piping is put in place to form holes through which the molten metal will be poured. Parting sand is again sprinkled on, this time onto the opposite side of the pattern and another layer of facing sand. Pattern making is a craft in its own right, and large foundries employ pattern makers to prepare the patterns for moulding. These are often made in wood and then cast in aluminium and can take weeks to make. The powers, if they do not use an old and perfect casting as a pattern, make up their own. David is now forming the cupped opening into which the molten metal will be poured. More venting. Water squeezed around the pattern helps to solidify the edges so that it can be lifted cleanly away. Wrapping the pattern helps to free it from the sand and prepares it for the most crucial part of all, the lifting free. Two small hooks are inserted into the holes in the pattern to make the job possible. Sometimes a little repair work is necessary. Go for that piece there, Dave. Yeah, right. As soon as this repair work is completed, channels are cut which will carry the molten metal into the pattern by way of the ports in the top box. There are two openings for delivering the metal to this garden chair, which will have to be poured simultaneously to maintain a constant flow and pressure. The foundry cycle is exactly one week. Moulding, which starts on a Monday, will continue until Thursday evening, when the whole floor of the casting area will be covered with boxes. We have band practice uh, two nights a week. Michael Fottle is the conductor and teacher and he trains all the different um, people. I started off playing music with Sister Aidan, a nun in the girls' school as an infant. She taught us how to play tin whistle. I've been involved in jazz over the last ten years or so now, but I always wanted to read music and learn properly. Silver Band has recently been formed and the average age of the musicians is only 14 years of age.
Uh, we get our scrap from the, the Connors family who live over the road. My father is the one for looking after the scrap because he's been at the business a long, a long time. He's always a keen eye for a good bit of scrap. Can throw it off there? Huh? Where are we throw it? Throw it off anywhere there. What's it off there, is it? Yeah. 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 I think it's the old slate. Throw it away. And shoot the spark. Uh, we only use the best kind of um, scrap cast iron because we don't use any chemicals, so we have to pick and choose our scrap very carefully. If there's so much steel in the, in the metal, it hardens the metal, makes it very brittle. If the next man begins as good as Lord I'll be all right. We grant you. I'll be around this day next week, you know, same yeah, time. Yeah, okay. right. yeah, yeah. Look. 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 The cores are made of uh, a mixture of sea sand, uh, linseed oil and the flour. The flour is added to the sand and gets a thorough mixing. The flour and the linseed oil bind the sand particles together and it will harden like cement when it's cooked in the oven. And a taste of water for good measure. The little wooden moulds were carved from teak wood by John Power. He coats them liberally with diesel oil to prevent the mixture from sticking. Well, my father has been in the sand casting since, since his first job, really. Uh, he grew up in the country and um, he started working in a steel company in, in, on the quay, which we had a foundry in the early 40s and 50s, until he moved to England in, in the early 50s and worked at a foundry in Bristol, where he learned most of the trade. He worked here in this foundry under the old owners in the 50s as well. So it was nice for him to be able to come back and buy the business he worked in as a, a chap. I suppose it was a, a lifetime ambition uh, realised for him. The first thing we do is we go and dig the murder clay. It's a job I don't really like because it's a pick and shovel job. It doesn't look very good. Do we need much this time, lads? No, just a four-bar. The murder clay is very handy stuff because... Uh, it replaces guns or what they use in the, in the foundries. Um, and it's great for lining the furnace. As King Alfred burnt the cakes. Seamus, having added water to the marl, gives it a thorough mashing to crush any small stones and make it malleable. Mould making continues. These are small locking grids for Dublin County Council. There are six to a box and they'll slot into the surrounding frame. Right, Pat. Ready for that. Usually of the day they cast, uh, I plaster the inside of the furnace where it all burns. It usually burns maybe a couple of inches into the, the bricks of the furnace. So you have to plaster it every time. It's not in here, London. Pushing in. Why didn't you just say it? Yeah, sure, I'm saying it. 
the cores will occupy the space where hinges and keys will fit and prevent the metal from forming. These can only be fitted on the day of the casting and must be bone dry. If they take up moisture, they could cause an explosion within the mould during the casting. Poor old Patch has been run out of the shed for fear of them collapsing the moulds. The rats will have another day of peace. That's all right. Now, stand now. When you close the doors, uh, you put a layer of sand, maybe eight shovels of sand in the bottom of it, and then you, you ram it with a big long rammer down from the top. If you didn't put the sand in it, the metal would melt through the, the steel plates in the bottom of the furnace onto the ground. The marl clay is indispensable. The metal chute which carries the molten metal must be lined with it. For hot metal coming into contact with cold steel causes an explosion. When I came here first, a lot of the scrap was uh, mowing machines and uh, turnip machines and all more or less farming implements. But uh, over the years now, it's, it's kind of gone into... Um, you have a kind of a new wave of, of scrap coming in, like... A lot of the old type forcing tractors and they have it brown. And, but the biggest problem with, the, with, with tractors and engine blocks is they all have to be cleaned out. All the pistons and the crankshaft and all the nuts and bolts. There's been an awful lot of call for these old cast iron fireplaces. And in my time here, after breaking up, I don't know how many dozen. If I had a pound for every one I broke up, I'd be a millionaire, I'd say, no. The powers make manhole covers by the hundred. And I hold it in. And these must have a reinforcing plate of steel underneath the core, so that when the key is used to lift the cover, it won't break the casting. A large lump of cast iron, impervious to the hammer blows, is jockeyed into position. How are you doing with the book? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you get the stuff in over it? If it blocks the stuff and it falls down when you say uh, in between. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you chancing it there then? Not chancing it, I mean it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. You just knock it in with the shovel then. Well, if it's all right, you'll be doing it anyway. Yeah, I will be doing it. Yeah. The fire in the furnace will be kindled with wood. A special furnace coke is used for the firing. It will be mixed with limestone to purify the metal. Pat Cal is a son in law who helps out on the day of the casting. Johnny Doyle, another son-in-law and part-time fireman, also gives them a hand. For as we said before, this is very much a family affair. Only coke is shoveled on at this time, and the metal and limestone will be added later. It takes up to three hours before the fire is hot enough for the fan to be switched on. Well, my father is more or less retired now from business, but he still be up around the yard keeping an eye on us, go around tormenting us, following us around, making sure that everything are done the way he'd like them done. Uh, but the only thing about this old job is that uh, he does have good advice because he's been through a lot himself. Yes, sir. Slag, the waste from the metal which floats to the top, will flow through a hole in this door. The fan will blow the coke to a white hot heat and melt the metal in about eight minutes. Seamus lets the molten metal flow out of the furnace onto the ground to discover whether it's hot enough to pour. It's recycled back into the furnace. 
charges of coke limestone and metal will continue to be added until near the end of the pouring. My father still can't resist coming up around the yard and grabbing a ladle of metal when the furnace starts going. He gets very excited with the metal because it's uh, maybe living with danger so much that he can't resist the, the temptation to be involved. Living with danger is right. Molten metal is very unpredictable material and can bounce in all directions. The large objects must be poured simultaneously from each side with double ladles to maintain pressure and fusion. The only use for the slag is as a filling for paths and roadways. With the glare off the metal, it, it blinds you for split seconds, so you have to kind of be used to uh, where you're looking all the time. The, the furnace melts so fast, actually melts quicker than we can take the metal away from it sometimes. And you have to keep going as fast as you can go. There's no time for breeders or a break. At the end of the day, it's nearly unbearable to heat inside. You could have a, a steam bath. You wouldn't mind going across to the pub and getting a few pints when you finish. May Power is always present at the pouring, just to keep an eye on the family. Her presence is never resented. The men know she's anxious for their safety. Actually, to dress you, oh, have he's, he's he's just doing his prime here now with the sandwiches. Come sandwich. on, with some more. Enjoy the sandwich. Yeah, I don't teeth. If you had the false teeth, you'd melt the steak anyway. So, no. ah, sure. You'd be able to afford new one. I think you have enough. Come on, Bob. Come on, Sam. Can't find out. Oh, sure. Next, we'll need the sandwiches. Hey, hey, boy. On the bubble. On the bubble. On the bubble. Take the ribbon from your head. Shake it loose and let it fall. Light to shadows on the wall. Come and lay down by my side. Yeah. Till the airy morning rise. All I'm taking is your time. Help 
help me make it through tonight. Here we go. of ancient traditions facing an uncertain future. But I have a feeling that the powers in their foundry will be there well into the 21st century, because as Seamus says, there's no sign yet that the need for cast iron is a thing of the past. I think he's right. More metal to the powers. <laughs> 